Hello and welcome to CHD 218, Math and Science for the Young Child. We're going to learn about what it looks like to do math with preschoolers and infants and toddlers and science as well. Um, it's not worksheets. It's not standing at the board writing equations. It's a lot more hands-on and it's a lot more fun. So I'm going to take you through some of the expectations for the class and assignments and all that stuff. And um, here we go. So my name is Amy Kilgus Chamley, and I am going to be your instructor for the next eight weeks as we study math and science together. And I just wanted to introduce you to the COBRA site and give you some of my um, expectations, a little quick run through the syllabus and the course outline, show you how the whole thing's gonna work. So we'll start right here. This is the front page of the COBRA site for CHD 218. And everything that we do in the classroom is gonna be on this website, right? This is an all online class. We will not meet in person. We will have um, potentially a couple of Zoom meetings where you'll meet with me individually to do your projects, which we'll get to in just a second. So let's just go through this. Um, each week, you'll want to check this announcements area on Mondays because there may be new information posted right there. If you're subscribed to it, it'll show up in your email too. Before I go any further, I want to tell you how important it is that you check your Parkland email very often. This is how I'm gonna communicate with you. This is a good way for you to communicate with me. Check your Parkland email. If you don't check your Parkland email, you may miss out on reminders about assignments, about grades, about questions, about things that I might wanna know. So please check your Parkland email. And if you're corresponding with me by email, do it through your Parkland email. If I see an email from a Yahoo or a Hotmail or a Gmail, I'm not gonna know who it is and I'm not gonna pay attention to it. If it's on your Parkland email, then I will know that it's you. Check that email. Okay, let's go. The way I set up my COBRA sites is basically week by week. So there are two areas that are not quite week by week that I want you to know about. Number one is overview. This is where we put the syllabus. We, I put the syllabus. So what you'll see here is the syllabus for this class and all the information about contacting me. My office hours are on Mondays from 6 to 7.30 on Zoom. And I will put the link in the announcements on the front page of COBRA and I will remind you periodically. This class does not use a textbook. We have a course pack, which is available at the Parkland Bookstore. It's like $15, $20 maybe. It's um, a whole binder full of articles and that's gonna be your reading for this class. It's important that you buy the course pack and it's very important that you read the readings. Okay. What are we going to learn about? We're going to learn basic science and math concepts and how to work with them with young children. All right. So you've got your course goals here, and this is what you all want to know. What are the requirements for this course? Well, the requirements are number one, that you participate in the online discussions. Online discussions are very, very important. Okay. Um, the next thing is you will do two papers on some articles or some videos that I want you to watch. So um, one on math and one on science. Okay, those are gonna be about a page and a half to two pages, double spaced. Make sure you fully uh, explain your ideas and also make sure that you check it over for grammar and typos. You'll do activity plans. If you've taken um, program planning or other classes with me, you may have uh, run into activity plans before. Activity plans are basically 
um, coming up with an idea of something you're going to do with young children and putting it down on paper so that I know what you're talking about. Um, planning for your class, right? We use a form. The form is in COBRA. I'll show you where it is. You're going to do a project focused on a basic science concept. You're going to involve a book in that project, a children's book, I believe. Let me make sure. And Yep. And you will, um, so you'll find a children's book about science or that involves a science concept. It might be about the leaves changing in the spring. It could be about anything. And then what you'll do is you will create an activity based on that book. You'll write up an activity plan. That will be um, one of your eight activity plans that's due this semester. And then you're going to demo it. So it, you're going to actually create the, the project, the activity, the game, whatever. And you're going to demo it by either recording yourself, video recording yourself, showing the game, showing how it works or the activity and send that to me. Or we're going to set up a one on one Zoom where you're going to show it to me. OK. You're going to do one of those for math and one for science. All right, and that's basically it. So you have eight discussion forums, eight activity plans, two topic papers, and two projects. Um, that's all spelled out here, and it's all spelled out in the assignments on COBRA. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, points available, all that stuff. Use your student email and then the rest of the Parkland general syllabus is here and you can also find it by going to this address right here, okay? So that's your syllabus. Next most important thing is your course outline. So it is right here and this is a week by week telling you what you're going to do. So week one, which is this week, you have these articles to read in your course packet. And then on the Thursday of each week, you will have your first discussion responses due. And then on Sunday, you will have another set of responses due. So let's go to discussions and see what that looks like. Under discussions, you have a weekly discussion forum and you have a question of the week or questions. In this case, it's about what are your experiences with math and how do you think that's going to impact your teaching of math with young children, working with math and young children. So what you'll do is you'll read the questions, press start a new thread, put in your answers here, right? And I want very full answers. I want to know what you are really thinking. I don't want yes and no. I want a lot of thought put into this. This is how you participate in the class. This, the discussions are 40% of your grade, so you have to do it. So you'll reply to this, right? And then that's by Thursday at 10 p.m. And then by Sunday at 10 p.m., you need to respond to two of your classmates' responses. So that means what you need to do is between Thursday and Sunday, read through all your classmates' responses and make some comments about one of them, two of them, right? Each week you will respond to two classmates. You can respond to more than that, but the requirement is two. And again, your responses should not be, I really liked what you posted, it made a lot of sense. It should really delve into why it made sense to you or what you agree with or disagree with. And remember, it's important to be respectful of others' ideas because some people have, you know, we have a lot of variety of ideas about how things should be done. And that's part of the reason why this is a, a good place to learn other people's ways of thinking, right? So that's what you do. By Thursday, you need to post once. And then by Sunday, you need to respond to two of your classmates. And you'll do that each week. And as you can see, if you go into each week, the discussions are right in there. They're the ones that say number one, number two, number three, number four, and you have eight of those to do. Some of them, like week two, it's not just questions. You have to watch a video. So you watch the video and then you're going to give up your responses, okay? 
let's go back to the course outline. Okay, so like I said, each week it tells you what's happening and when everything is due. Okay, let's go to the math topic paper. Oh, oh activity plans. So in the second week, you'll have some activity plans due. We'll go look at that. The activity plan form is right here. There's a Word version and a PDF version. Basically, make sure you circle whether it's math or science. In this class, what I'd like you to do is you have um, one math activity plan that's related to your math project, one that's related to your science project, and then I'd like you to do three math and three science. Then you'll have your eight, okay? So I want you to put a title in for your activity, a general description. This should be a lot of words. It should tell me exactly what you're doing and why. I need you to describe your activity in really good detail. Then I want you to tell me what areas of development you're focusing on with this project. So for instance, if it's counting and sorting marbles, so that would be a cognitive, right? Because you have to use um, your cognitive, your brain skills to figure out what's a blue marble, what's a red marble, and also small motor to move those marbles from place to place. General concepts or objectives. What I want you to do here is go to the Illinois Early Learning Development Standards for preschool, which you can find in the course outline area. And I want you to figure out which learning standard you're working on here. So you might say, it's really hard to see, so you might want to print it out, but um, compares to collect, let's see, if we're doing um, sorting marbles, this would be learning standard 7A, measurable, measure objects and quantities using direct comparison methods and non-standard units, maybe, um, it might be, yeah, because it would be compare, order, and describe objects according to a single attribute. So you might be sorting them by size, you might be sorting them by color, but when you're sorting, or it could be explore objects and patterns too, when you're sorting, that's a math activity and it's one of these standards. So I want you to make sure that you cite one of the standards or more in your activity plan each time. Okay, let's go back to that activity form. Let's see what else is in there. What materials are you gonna need? Three open-ended questions you could use to facilitate children's learning. Open-ended questions are questions that don't have a specific answer. How did it feel when you put your hands in the shaving cream? Um, how did you figure out which marbles went where? What is happening when we mix the colors together? Those are open-ended questions. I want you to write three of them. How would you build on this activity if you were to do it again? So is there a book you could read? Is there a project you could do that might extend this activity farther? Um, if you were sorting marbles, maybe you could um, do something similar with balls outside, colored balls or something like that. So what's a way that you could extend or expand on this activity? And then what age is this activity best suited for? Okay, so you're gonna fill out eight of those. Four of them are gonna be about math. Four of them are gonna be about science. One is gonna be about your science project and one is gonna be about your math project, okay? Sometimes in the various weeks, there will be a lecture, a video lecture and some class notes, not always but sometimes there will be. So you'll wanna watch those and you'll want to pay attention because you might need that information later. Um, like I said, each week I will try to remember to put something in the announcements right here that tells you what's going on. 
All right. I think that is about everything you need to know. We can go look at those um, assignments quick. Let's see. We've got the math topic paper is due in week three. So when you look for an assignment, it will be a Dropbox. And in this case, the assignment is right in the Dropbox. So click on the Dropbox and then it kind of goes over most of it here, but you should click on the attachment because that way you can print it out. This one, you're gonna read two articles and in your own words, talk about it, what you've learned from the article. Two and a, one and a half to two pages, double space, 12 point font with, um, I'll take points off for incorrect grammar and typos. Don't, so don't do that, okay? Um, now, and then you will submit your papers right there, right? Um, there are other resources in many of these weeks that I may or may not talk about but they are handy things that you might always want to open up and check out and see what that's about. All right, that was the math topic paper. And now let's go look at the math project, which is in week four. Here's the assignment. Okay. And open it all the way up. You're going to create a math game based on a children's book. And it says demonstrated in class, but it's you're not actually demonstrating it in class. What you're going to do is demonstrate it, like I said, in a video of yourself that you record and submit or in an individual Zoom meeting with me. And it's all spelled out right there. Okay. So that pretty much covers it. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact me. Go back here to the um, syllabus and it tells you, right? Here's my phone number, email. Also, you should join the Classroom Remind. This is on the front in the announcement. Texts at CHD218 to 81010. And that's going to be the quickest way to get in touch with me. If you um, contact me via Remind, I will almost always get back to you within the hour because that one goes right to my phone and I've always got my phone with me. So please make sure to do that. Other than that, I think um, this will be a fun semester. This is a fun class and I hope you will enjoy it and learn a lot.